All right, Shalom. Call Loyim La, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, Bashim, Rakak Wadash. Double honor to my elders and my apostles at Great Millstone who rule well for teaching me the truth. Salutations to the elect. Habakayar. Shalom. This is Brother Chaya here with GMS Charlotte. Coming back at you with another video through the Spirit, man. And um, I was just uh, watching this um this video right here, man. It was a breaking news video a brother had posted on uh, The Plus. I believe it was the brother Shamar, uh, Salakia, Kwadar Shapat. They yeah, posted on a plus talking about how uh, UK must prepare for all out war against Russia, China and Iran military the chief orange because uh, UK who is in Yeah, who is in league with with the US, man. All right. They you know, they uh, they get mad over the uh, the immigration issue that's been going on. All right. All of these um, Iranians and so on and so forth, you know, have been moving over there. OK, and they talking about how that's going to lead to a. Uh, um, active terrorism and so on and so forth because because they think that they're, they're infiltrating the country, you know. So these so UK, you know, they, they they talking about um gathering some missiles ready to start bombing these places, man. All right. And vice versa, so like you. And vice versa. All right. So these these nations, all right, starting with Esau, the so called white man. Okay. These these nations they they ready to go to war with each other, man. All right, so that the World War Three it's on its way, man. Hey, it's about that time. It's about that time, you know. Somebody somebody was bound to speak out. Okay, you got these issues all over there in London and so on and so. Again, this this immigration policy is is really getting to them. You know, what I mean, of course we know it's beyond that, man, because we know you know America breaking these treaties and interfering. In the, uh, in the affairs of these other nations and so on and so forth, man. But all of that has led up to this point. Okay, it's about to be all out war. All right. So with that being said, yeah, kind. There you go. You can see it right there in the description. It says the UK must prepare for all out war and shift away from our peacetime mentality amid rising fears from super states, Russia, China, and Iran. The head of the military has said, okay, and we, we never really been in a time of peace, but this that's how you saw the so called white man makes it look like, you know, like we're in a time of peace. But hey, all of this so called peace is about to go away, you know. So, with that being said, let's get into some scriptures, man. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. All right, there you go. There's there's a time for everything, man. All right, and, you know, I ain't going to read this whole thing. I'm going to just jump to the points. You know, we're going to figure out through the spirit what time we're in. All right? So let me jump down to Ecclesiastes 3 and 8. All right, verse 8, it says, a time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. So you need to ask yourself, are you are you in a time of love right now? All right, hell no. Everybody ain't giving flowers uh, to each other, you know, giving each other pats on the backs and so on and so forth, man. All right, giving each other hugs and kisses and stuff. All right, we, we ain't in, in a time of love, man. We're, in, we're not in a time of agreement, you know. It says a time to love and a time to hate. All right, we are in a time of hate, man. With this, hey, World War Three is imminent. It's inevitable. All right, this world's about to pop up and yeah, you're really going to see the hate from these nations. You know, these hate that these hate uh, that these nations have for Esau, the so-called white man, primarily. OK, well, we're so lucky that the nation of Israel primarily. All right. And Esau, the so-called white man for, for ruling um, from ruling over the world and dictating the world and leading the world in wickedness, man. OK, we're about to experience the hate that these nations have. OK, America, hey, America in the, in the UK, you know, and all of these places in league, man, they're about to get nuked. All right, they're about to get bombed, man. These uh, 200 million ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, is coming to this place. All right, we're in a time of hate, a time of destruction. It says a time of war and a time of peace. We are no longer in a time of peace, man. All right, the scriptures say when, uh, for once they shall say peace and sudden destruction. That destruction is coming. All right, that destruction is on its way. Okay. So this is the time. This is the signs and the times that we're looking at, man. When these these other nations is getting ready to go to war with each other, man. All right. This is the day that Yahabashim Shah has 
ordained. All right. Let me get this in the book of Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 4. It says, the noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people. Okay? Going into those intercontinental ballistic missiles. All right? That's that's the um the noise of the multitude in the mountains, man. It says, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. Yeah, man, the uproars of the people. You know? It says, the Lord of hosts muster the hosts of the battle. All right? The word muster means to make uh, means to make ready to a point. So the Lord is setting up these heathen nations, all right? These these strong men, these soldiers, okay, to the army, so uh, uh, to to get ready for battle. It's, all right, it's about to be a great war, you know, World War Three, WW three, man. All right, and it's long overdue. We really in the midst of World War Three now. There's bombs going off all over the place, but it hasn't gotten that serious yet, okay? But it's about to, man. All right. Verse 5, it says, they come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord, and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. There you go. That's World War Three right there. All right, these ICBMs, these intercontinental ballistic missiles are the weapons of the Lord's indignation, his righteous anger. All right, Quatazop. Okay? So this is the day that the Lord has a day, man. This is the day that's that's, that's coming, man, with, with UK preparing for an all-out war, as the, uh, as the video said, an all-out war. You know, hey, you people are going to see true destruction. It's going to be a hey, the, the time of Jacob's trouble, man, the time of World War Three. That's going to be a terrible time. And, and, Pete, and we are about to witness it. You know, you're going to people going to know the Lord in this day. All right. The scriptures talk about how the, um, the day of the Lord is, is, uh, is uh, terrible, man. All right. And concerning these heathenistic nations, man, these these heathen nations, man, let me get this. All right. Because this is going into that as well. You know, these, these foreign nations, Salakia. This is the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 9. It says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. All right? Proclaim, uh, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Yeah, uh, prophesying to, to, these, to these heathen. Okay? It says, Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Yeah, these warriors. All right, these soldiers, you know, because you got these um these these Russians and these North Koreans and the rest of these guys, man. All right, their their military might is great. All right, America ain't the biggest bully on the block no more. So the Lord is is telling us to tell them to hey, prepare for war, and that's what they doing through the spirit, man. Our war is on its way. Okay, verse ten it says, "Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong.'" And that's what these nations. Have done. All right. These nations that was famous for agricultural things, you know. It says beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. You know, they turned all of their farming equipment into weapons of war. All right. And it says, let the weak say, I am strong. See, these other nations, you know, who was once weak, all right, again, they was popular for agriculture. Now they're saying they got the power, they got the juice, man. All right. Meaning America ain't the biggest, baddest bully on the block no more, man. All right, all, all of that is done, you know? It says, assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Then the cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. All right, those mighty ones is talk about the angels because when Yahweh Shah comes back, the angels is coming right along with him, man. It's going to be a fleet of chariots, man, in the skies, all right? And that's, that's, as the scriptures say, that's the curse that devoureth the whole earth, man. All right, roughly paraphrasing. It says, assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen. Yeah, get ready. Okay. Moab, Ammon, Ham. All right. The, 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 the Medes, Esau. Okay. And all of the rest of you guys. Ishmael. It says, and gather yourselves together round about. Did the cause thy mighty wants to come down, O Lord. Verse 12, let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. All right. The word Jehoshaphat, going back to the Hebrew word Yahweh Shapat, means uh, Yahweh's judgment. All right. We're about to find out where that place is going to take place at. All right. Where, where, yeah, where, yeah, where that place is, is going to be at, man. All right. It says, let the, the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Yahweh Shapat. All right. Yahweh's judgment. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. So, these guys going to war is judgment from the most side because it's about to be a lot of death out here. Okay? 
It says, put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for the wickedness is great. Yeah, the wickedness of, of, of the world is great, man. All right, it says, put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Yes, hey, it's, it's ready, man. It's about to be a lot of slain men out here. Men, women, children, old folk, whatever whatever the hell you can um, imagine, man, whatever you can name. All of that is about to be out here. It's about to be a lot of bloodshed. All right. It says, put ye in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. All right. It's, it's ready, man. This war is ready. Get you down for the press is full. The fats overflow for the wickedness is great. Verse 14, it says multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. All right. The um, Yahweh Shapat. It says for the day is near in the valley of decision. Yahweh Shapat, man. Yahweh's judgment, you know, which will take place over in the Middle East. OK, this is the third world's war. The scriptures tell you, man. The second will uh, pass, but behold, the third will cometh quickly in the book of Revelations. All right. It says, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. All right. So the day of World War Three is when everything is going to be decided, man. Who's who's going to be on top? OK, who's going to be the world's next leader? And of course, it's going to be Yahweh Shah. OK, it tells you that, you know, he's a king of kings, Lord of lords. Matter of fact, let me uh, find a scripture right here through the spirit, man. Con. Con, con. This is the book of Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. It says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. All right. And we about to find out. We about to find out exactly who this is, man. Okay. Who, who is this guy, man? All right. It says his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. All right. And that man is talking about Yahweh Shai. All right. We, we, we know, we know the name. All right. Yahweh Shai. It says at verse 11, I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. All right, a, a grand chariot. It's not a literal white horse. All right. White and horse. That word white means pure and horse represents power. OK, like uh, when you look at cars, man, they say a, a car got X amount of horsepower and so on and so forth. Our right, horses represents power, man. Those are strong animals. All right. And they they, they gallop, man. They're fierce. OK. So it's, it's, it's just pure strength. That's Yahweh Shai. That's the son of the most high. He represents pure strength, man. OK. It says that he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. So when Yahweh shall come back and crack them clouds, man, and what the world calls UFOs, man, them chariots, all right? It says and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. That's Yahweh Shai, all right? He delivers or he is salvation, all right? He's faithful and true. And in righteousness, okay, righteousness, he doth judge and make war, all right? So for the controversy of Zion, for the nation of Israel, Yahweh Shah has to make war with this has to, has to make war with this world, this land, to redeem his people. Okay? Yahweh Shah is faithful and true. Okay. Verse 12, it says his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. All right. Now going into the eyes as a flame of fire. All right. That's that goes back to Revelation 1 and um believe it's one uh, uh, 14 or 15, something along there, right? But you, you get the point where it goes into the description of Yahweh Shah. His eyes were as a flame of fire. In the book of Daniel, it says his eyes were like lamps of fire, man, because Yahweh Shah, he drank wine. But that uh, uh, that's twofold because it also represents the destruction that he's going to bring all right, when he comes back and destroy this world. All right. It says his eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. All right, those many crowns represents the the um the uh the heads of 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 these these um these nations that he wounded that he that he took out of power. Okay, Yahweh Shah, he's he's gonna be the new world's leader, man. All right, the nation of Israel is the real new world order. All right, and that that that's coming. Okay, Yahweh Shah is gonna bring upon that righteous new world order, man. All right. So those many crowns, again, that, that represents the, the heads of these nations, you know, these kings, you know, it says that he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. 
Verse 13, it says, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of the Most High. All right, that vesture, you know, it's it uh, it uh it represents the um the chariots, man. And that that jet um that them chariots, they're gonna kill. All right, that's why it says Salakia. That's why it says um dipped in blood. All right, that it, this doesn't mean your house is gonna be out. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, physically killing everybody, okay? I mean, he's going to be physically killing, kill, killing everybody. I'm talking about his body. I mean, he's going to be killing from the chariots. All right, that, that vesture dipped in blood represents the death that he's going to bring. You know, like that one scripture, I believe it's in um, Isaiah, okay? The, um, the uh, matter of fact, let me just go ahead and get it, man. I don't want to butcher it. Um, How did it go, man? I think it's um I've treaded the wine press alone. I believe it's it's in that chapter. Con, con, yeah, Isaiah sixty-three and three. It says, I have tro I have trodden, I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. All right. So Yahweh Shah is is likening this the destruction that he's uh, going uh, about to perform. All right, this grand destruction that he's about to perform, as if going through slaying these men, and you know what I'm saying. He he's staying in his apparel. All right, but this is not literal. This is talking about how he's going to be killing from the from these chariots, man. All right, Esau, the so-called white men, Ishmael, the so-called Arabs, Ham, the so-called Africans, and so on and so forth, these nations, man. All right, verse 4 says, For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. All right, the redeemed, talking about the election, the 144,000 prophets and the one-third of, right, of the nation of Israel, the chosen. All right, Yahweh Shah said, The day of vengeance is in my heart. You know, so it's in his mind because slavery didn't take place not too long ago. What is heathen had us in derision. Okay, and still have us in derision to this day, but we 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 breaking out of those curses, man. All right, our curses are starting to fall upon them. Okay. Yeah, this this whole chapter is real heavy, but you know what I'm saying. Like I, I was just getting a point. All right, let's go back to um. Revelation. Okay. Going back to uh let me see. Verse 13 it says and he was clothed with a with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of the most high. That's Yahweh Shah, the word of the most high. Right? He's the truth. He's faithful and true. Okay? So no 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 one else could come could come above Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. All right, that is, he is the deliverer, man. He is, all right, he is the deliverer, man. He is salvation for the nation of Israel. In order to restore Israel, he has to conquer these other nations, okay? Verse 14, and I'm going to close it off here. It says, matter of fact, no, I'm not. I'm, yeah, I'm stopped at 15. It says, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Yeah, representing the angels, all right, the, the armies that's that's going to be with you, how shot that represents the angels. So it's going to be more chariots out here. All right. And we, hey, we're about to see what these chariots is about to do, which which represents the, the vesture dipped in blood. We're about to see what these chariots is about to do, man. OK, verse um 15. Uh, so like in, again, concerning the white horses, that represents pure strength, man, which which is them chariots, the angels in those chariots, man. All right, verse 15, and I'm going to close it off here. It says, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty, of, of Almighty Yahweh. Okay? It says, that out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. All right, that sharp sword represents those laser beams, that, that concentrated fire, man. That, that Yeah, that concentrated fire, man. All right, whether you want to, whether you people want to believe it or not, because we know you scoff, all right, miser uh, miserably. It says, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, man, a sword destruction. All right, those those laser beams. 
that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. So after he after Yahusha and the angels they kill off who they gotta kill off, man, the rest of these heathens is going into slavery. So that's why this war has to take place, man. There has to be judgment. Okay. It says, and he treadeth the wine press, like it says in Isaiah the 63rd chapter, and he treadeth the wine press of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, all right, of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, all right? That's why, this this is the reason why all the, uh, all the bloodshed, man, all right, he's doing it with the fierceness of his of his father, man, all right, they, again, they're on the same accord, so this, so, for again, for the controversy of Zion, all right, to, to put this world back in order, to put this world back in righteousness, for no more wars to happen, Yahweh Shai has to come back, and he has to destroy, there's going to be a lot of killing out here, man. Okay, a scarce amount of people is going to survive, man. Hey, the Lord is about to hit the reset button. All right, then that's World War Three right there. That's that's the beginning of that reset. All right. With that being said, Lord willing, this is edifying through the spirit, man. I want to say, call Allah, Allah, Yahweh, Bashim, Al-Shah, Bashim, Rakaq, Wadash. Double honors to my elders and my apostles at Great Millstone who rule well for teaching me this truth. And salutations to the elect. Habakkuk, Yar. Inshallah,